Today we're talking about setting up the Canon EOS R for shooting C-Log footage, and what settings I use to get it close to matching footage from the Canon C200. I'm Rafael, and welcome to the channel. C-Log has been in Canon cinema cameras from the very beginning. It enables up to 12 stops of dynamic range, reduces heavy shadows and blown out highlights, and it even provides a better source from which to perform extensive color grading in post-production. Internal recordings for C-Log are 8-bit and 10-bit is available for external but in 4K only. Today we're only going to be talking about 8-bit internal recording. On my C200 I actually shoot C-Log over C-Log 3 to easily match the two cameras better in post. If I choose to use a LUT they're very similar right out the gate and I found this to be the closest match. If you're not comfortable color correcting log footage you have two options really. Learn it and it's not really that hard to color correct or don't shoot C-Log. You can use the standard picture profile and just reduce the sharpening. I would recommend the neutral picture profile and set the sharpness to zero and add a bit of sharpness later in your editor of choice. Or set it to two if you want something pleasant right out of the camera without that crunchy video look. In a future video I'll show you how to color correct C-Log footage without LUTs and I'll also show you which LUTs I do use that I feel work the best. So give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see that. Also near the end of the video I'll show you why it's always better to slightly overexpose your EOSR footage. It'll help reduce noise and consistently get you usable footage. Okay let's go over all the settings I use to shoot C-Log. So we're going to go over to the camera on page number four and go right into Canon log settings. Go to Canon log 8-bit. 10-bit is available but it's only available through the HDMI out and only in 4K. So you're going to get a cropped image on the EOS R in its current state. Click OK. Go to view assist. I keep view assist on because it adds a LUT Rec 709 to the viewfinder and to the screen so your footage doesn't look flat and it helps you see what it's actually going to look like. So keep that on. Go to color matrix. I have this set to the Cinema EOS original because it closely matches the C200 footage. So I leave that there. And the characteristics, I don't touch anything here. I try to have the sharpness down to zero because I like to add sharpness later in post-production. And again, saturation and hue, you want to leave that at zero. You want to have the flattest footage you can. Okay, go back to menu. For the movie record quality, I shoot everything in full HD, 23.98, all I. And if I want slow motion, I shoot full HD in 60 frames a second, all I. IPB and all I are essentially different methods of compressing movie files. All I was designed for higher end cameras to capture the highest quality possible. So individual frames are much higher quality than IPB. Overall files are much larger, about three times larger than IPB compression. Ultimately shooting with all I, you'll see cleaner footage. Unless you're running out of space on your card and you don't have time to clear it and you need to keep shooting, perhaps this is an instance where you can drop it down to IBP to get more footage. The two main advantages to all I is that the image quality is better and it takes less computer processing power, which results in better playback for faster editing. So I recommend shooting with all I always. All right? All right. So mostly I shoot full HD over 4K. I just find that the image quality is really good and I like being able to use the full field of view of all the lenses I have. Movie cropping is essentially if you have lenses that don't cover the full sensor, this will allow you to crop in just the center portion of the sensor and use those lenses. For sound recording, I have it set to manual and I made a video about why I set it to that. Go check it out. I like the image stabilization that the EOS R offers, so I have that enabled. For lens aberration correction, I have these set to both off. It tries to correct any distortion or chromatic flaws that happen within the lenses. I tend to leave this off because I like the natural feel of those. And so for white balance, I always make sure that I'm, that I'm set to the exact white balance that I need for the shot. I try to stay away from using auto white balance. And I use the Lumu Power 2 to get the proper color temperature in any scenario. It's a handy little tool. I recommend you checking it out. For white balance correction, I leave it at zero. But if you want to add a little bit of blue to tone down the Canon orange on the skin tones, you can definitely do that. And for high ISO speed noise reduction, I leave this off because I don't want the camera doing any kind of noise reduction when I can do that in post. And especially if there's no noise, I don't want it to soften the image unnecessarily. Those are the C-Log settings I use for the Canon EOS R. But now let's talk about why you should slightly overexpose your footage to get an even cleaner image. For the cleanest footage on the EOS R, the native ISO is 400. Anything below or above that will add a bit of noise. And the further you push it, the more noticeable the noise will get. Pushing the exposure one or two stops over are easier to recover than one or two stops below. 
even three stops can still produce a usable image when corrected in post-production, whereas underexposed footage will only reveal more noise when you try to correct it in post. This all runs counter to taking photos, where we're all taught to expose for the sky in outdoor scenes and bring back the shadows in Lightroom. Think of it this way, if there is noise in the image, you want to bring down the shadows to reduce the visibility of that noise, not boost the brightness, which will only introduce more noise. So if you don't have a light meter, in this case, the histogram is your best friend. You always want the light mountain to be in the middle and fall off nicely on either side. Nothing too dark and nothing too light. If it's pushed to the left, the images will be too dark. If it's pushed to the right, the images will be too bright. So keep it like Goldilocks and have it just right in the middle. That's it. The beauty of shooting C-Log is it allows for more image forgiveness and creative choices later. And overexposing will reduce the noise in your footage. The best is to experiment a little, do your own camera tests and see what works best for you. Let me know if you found any tips for cleaner footage. I'd love to hear them. As always, thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, hit the like button to let YouTube know to share it. Subscribe. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.